Welcome guys to the task cast. This is task two, meaning episode two. Uh, I'm your host Kareem. Uh, my co-host here, we have Ali and Timmy. Uh, we thank you guys for joining us for episode two. And uh, let's just jump right into it. Uh, hopefully you guys have all heard episode one. You guys know that we re- all have recently moved to Dubai within the last four years, two years over here. Uh, so I just really wanted to start today's episode by asking you guys what your experience has been here in Dubai for you and your family. Yeah. Um, what what have been your, your outlooks? What have you felt? How does your wife perceive it, right? Because I think as, as men, we kind of make the decision what's best for our family. We obviously discussed it with our wives, but we decided that this is what's best for our family. So how have your wives taken to it? How about the kids that you've, mm. you've raised here? And, and just uh, something else to put in your minds, I'm assuming that you guys travel back home to Australia often, at least once a year or so. And so what is that like when you travel, when you travel back home? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I think that's great, man. But did I ask too many questions? No, no, I should have split it up, right? That's, that's fine. Look, um, do you want to start off, Ali? No, you go with it. You go, Tim. Okay, well, um, so the first question was about See, how... Too many questions. Yeah, so around <laughs> yeah. the life, like, you know. Lifestyle. So, so when, we, when we moved to... You want to, me to start again? No, no, it's all right, man. You sure? So I think for me Well, was, don't answer them all, okay? I was so eager. <laughs> so I came no, no, in... No, start again, start I, again, because we're going to edit this part out. But start again, honestly. Don't answer no, them no, all. No, no, I'm doing it. So I was about to answer... Yeah, I know, but don't answer them all. No, no. Let you answer okay. one one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I shouldn't have we'll asked. Go, we'll go around, Robin. I shouldn't yeah. have asked. Okay, so we'll be in the blooper reel. <laughs> I came in with a couple of. I came in with a, a, with some inve- like with some investors, right? And the idea was um, set up here, um, and then start the project. Um, That's a project, right? Project, <laughs> right? And um, I'm just but, translating. From but Australian I think to actual I think English. I was so keen and eager. You can't overtalk this. That I all. didn't do I didn't do research enough, <laughs> right? So, well, let me of, ask you: Had you visited Dubai before you moved here? I did, and I was going back and forward. But I had been given advice by a, a, a friend of mine at the time about which way to create a business. Now, what I should have done was um, obviously check around and ask many, many different people. So I was just in a rush. So I set up very quickly here, even though it took, a bit, it took some time, it took a while to get the bank account, get the visas, and then once you get the visas, you've got to start the sponsorship process, getting the uh, apart- apartment, the jari, and all that <laughs> stuff. A lot of that information was brand new to me, and I had wish that I had researched more so I could have prepared for how much money it actually really costs to relocate uh, to Dubai. Um, so I would have to say that the first six months was tricky, um, particularly having a, uh, uh, like three kids, a wife that was heavily pregnant um, at the time, and we had just, you know, as soon as my son was born, the fourth one, uh, a month later, COVID hit. So we found that very challenging the first six months. So you were here during COVID? Yeah, I was here, yeah. And, um, and that was a, you know, I mean, the whole world of had course. to go through some sort of lockdowns. Most countries did. Yeah. Um, but there was, it was trying for the first six months, you know. Um, I'd have to say that my kids loved it and I loved it initially. I mean, I got to take them to this really great school, um, schools, in Australia are very different uh, than here. I would say that the schools here are like what you used to see in the American movies, you know, the college campuses. Yeah. They're like that, right? Well, yeah. Australia is very, very similar to the British, you know, sort of style. Um, and it was great. We loved it. Then when COVID hit, for the first six, for three months after that was... Uh, Bad. Now, I'll talk about the wife and the kids, but maybe Ali, you want to? Yeah, so um, I think Karim's first question, I can't remember the order that he asked them in, but I think the first question was about lifestyle. Mm. So I think I touched on it very briefly in the first episode. Um, it does take a little while to adjust to the lifestyle, even though it's a great country, because you got you have to understand you've got your own support network in Australia, you've got your family, you've got a routine. So when you come to Dubai, you have to create your own routine. You have to make your own friends. So I would say my wife really struggled the first six months because she had no friends for the first six months. I was her only friend. So obviously, oh, yeah, God, I know. I feel so bad. I was under a lot of pressure, you know. So <laughs> I, I feel to... bad for her, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I, 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 I'm yeah. going to say this. It's, um, 
it's very important. I was going to touch on it a little bit later, but yeah. it's very important that your wife, you encourage your wife to make her own friends, correct, her own network. I think one of the mistakes that I probably did was trying to force a friendship from my wife, my friends' wives. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And just because you're friends with someone doesn't, doesn't mean your wife is going to be uh, a friend, friends with their friends wife. with their wives. Well, right. Well, see, that Different person. But see, that touches on the relationships yeah. in Australia. A lot of the relationships in Australia, if you look back on them, you've had those since you were a child, or you know, high Maybe school, work or, from or work, work or, or uni. Like yeah. So you've they they've organically developed. So, you know, yep. you, that's the thing with Dubai. They will organically develop. You just don't know when. Yep. It's like finding love, you know. Yep. It comes when you least expect it. So, so I, I guess friendship I'm still is still looking for love. So I, <laughs> yeah, so I, man, Let's, so uh, cut I, definitely, I definitely encourage, you know, like, you know, anyone who, you know, is thinking of bringing here is it is going to be tough. Your wife will not know anyone unless they already have some friends here. Yeah. Well, you guys are bums, man. When I moved here, yeah. right, I had zero friends. Actually, I had a really, really close friend here who helped guide me through the process. But my wife had tons of friends that she had met from the States. Oh, really? Know, that had already moved okay. here. Okay, so, so it was the she opposite was, for you. She yeah. was the social one she and was, you were the... And I was at home just yeah. relaxing and enjoying oh, myself, man. you know, while she was out having a good time. Um, you know, over time, of course, I've met some people and most of the friends that I've met, I met through the first couple of friends that I met um, because I don't have a, mm. a business here or a job here. Here, uh, it's hard to same, just, it's yeah. hard it's hard to make. I think friends we here. met friends the same way, right? Yeah. One, one through the other, yeah. through the other, and, and yeah. you you become friends with them. Um, and I told I, I mentioned to you guys in, in task one that uh, I moved here. I landed here on January twenty seventh, right? So all of February we came here with nothing. Mm. By the way, uh, some of my friends came with containers of their stuff. We <laughs> left our house in the states, yeah, same. and I came same here each one of us with our two luggage, right? Yeah. And mm. it had a couple of things that were really dire, like really important to my wife. This is the appliance that I this love, is the or pot. whatever. But this like is the favorite pot, <laughs> yeah, yeah, little stuff. We didn't even have that, man. To be honest, <laughs> no, I brought pot with. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, but yeah, and so we just came basically with clothes. Um, yeah. And so that first month was us buying. I remember the our, we stayed in a hotel for a week, and we just had to get a refrigerator and mattresses. That was like my biggest my biggest goal. Yeah. Once we got those, we moved into our apartment. And for the next five or six weeks, we were just running around shopping, trying to get everything that we needed. And then I think it was March 15th, March 16th, something like that. The whole world shut down. Yeah. And then the UAE shut down uh, with you know with a way to track. The shutting down. Yep. So you had to ask for permission to go out, right? You had to get on an app and say that I'm going to the grocery store between this time and this time. And this is the car that I'm taking. And this is the license plate. And if you were out too long and you came back, these cameras were now, instead of only taking a picture if you passed a red light or speeding, they were taking a picture every time a car passed. And it was running your plate across the wow. time, time yeah. slot that you had requested. Um, and so you could go to a grocery store, you could go to the hospital, but that was about it. And uh, if, I'm not sure if you guys have seen, and even for our listener, if they haven't seen as well, definitely check it on YouTube. There's a video of Dubai under lockdown from a drone footage. There's not a single car on the road. Yeah. Wow. Like nobody was breaking rules. It's, it, it's actually absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, and so during that time, we only had one daughter, alhamdulillah, at that time. Alhamdulillah. Uh, like alhamdulillah for everything. I'm, I'm thankful that we have three. <laughs> I'm not saying thank God that we only had one. I'm just saying thank God for her. Um, and so we were just, it was like we were so close. knit. We actually moved my daughter into our room because mm. we found that like there was no sleep schedule. So we were like, why is she going to sleep at 8? She could sleep at 9, 10, 12. So she was just hanging out in our room. It was almost like we were camping. I'm going to tell you something, Kareem, for us. Because I had three kids and they were in school. Right? And the fourth one was just a baby. Well, right? see, that's one thing. Is our daughter was, she was in preschool. So, of course, the preschool closed. And then they did this virtual. It was useless. doesn't work. It doesn't useless. work. Yeah. I mean, for, for whatever yeah. elementary, middle school, maybe it works. But for a preschool, I mean, she was three years old. She yeah. What, like, still. Yeah. yeah, I put her in front of the laptop. And she's like, put on YouTube, kids. Put on Netflix. Yeah. I want to see Boston. Look, I, my, my, yeah. my third child, she was three at the time. So she was in FS1. Which we took her to an English school. Uh, FS1 meaning? It's like uh, pre kindy, kindy. Like pre -kindy, pre kindy or something like yeah. that. So English start a you year guys, early. Man, pre kindy. I'm asking you to translate FS1 right. and you say pre kindy. Uh, what the hell is pre kindy? Uh, uh, before kindergarten. Pre pretty much. Kindergarten. Okay, you guys but that's kindergarten American. In the US? Kindergarten is an American term. Okay, well, so right. one year Sorry before kindergarten. Sorry for our American yeah. listeners if right. you're listening. I'm sorry. So that the we're, British, I'm translating for So them. the British, okay, so it, here, because there's British curriculum and there's American curriculum. Correct. The British schools start at three years old. Right, so you can start your kid right. in three years, or you could put her in a nurse and put them in a nursery. But if you want them to follow the British curriculum, FS1 at three years old. Cool. 
So my son right now, my fourth son, the one that I had you know, raised here, he was born during COVID, he's now in FS1 in a nursery. They did, they had, it was great before COVID. Once COVID, she was not interested in any of the virtual stuff. Yeah. It was impossible. We actually ended up having to call the school and the teacher She's and say, young. look, just pull her out. Well, yeah. I asked, right. I actually called the school and I just said, we're not going to do it. Can I yeah. get a refund? And they said, we can't refund you, but we'll I'll take that credit that you had paid, whatever it was, a few for thousand next year, dirhams. Yeah. And for your next child, because that was going to be her last year yeah. in, in pre-K or, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So that will, we'll, for your next child. Well, my yeah. wife wasn't pregnant. We weren't even thinking about having another child. So to me, that money just went down the drain. Went down you know? the drain, yeah. um, and so I when, hope you got the receipt now that you got three. <laughs> <laughs> she well, got two others. I have a lot of other things to <laughs> worry about than those few thousand dirhams. <laughs> <laughs> so Karim, you spent the so let's just say March 2020 yep. to Dubai. I was actually in the states for work. Uh, okay. more, uh, my flight was I think was March 17th. Yeah. It was a Thursday, and my wife called and she said they're closing the borders on Wednesday. So you so need you to need to change your ticket and come back sooner. Ah, okay. So and, you, you, and I made a little prayer that hopefully I miss my flight and I'm just stuck <laughs> in the states for it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and so I changed my flight and I came and I was on one of the last flights back into Dubai. Um, mm. And then you know they they closed and, everything down and yeah. yeah we were stuck. But here. it was tough, uh, Ali. It what, was six tough, months. Man. The the lockdown was a three, very strict three, three months. Three months. Three months. And then they, I think the UAE handled COVID very well. Yeah. So we only had one lockdown right and compared to other countries who had multiple yeah. lockdowns right. uh, you know in, in our home country well, especially had, melbourne in australia three. we had three or four I think three was, right yeah. so we had very a very strict lockdown and then what happened afterwards is after three months they slowly started to open so i remembered all of a sudden we could go adults could go to the gym nice and Clearly, get, you didn't take the. I took on that. it. I took it, man. I was there at the gym. I, you know, Where, where's the like gains, man? I didn't even have, right. And then afterwards was okay. You know, the pool started to open up. You could go to the pool, but social distancing. Not that that anyone really followed it. Yeah. Well, you right? remember in the elevators? They had the stickers. Yeah, and you and were to stay to on the stay, corners. Yeah. Stay, face the corner. You're yeah, supposed pretty to stay much. And the face away from each face other. Face the corner. Yeah. Was so awkward. Right. And then slowly they started to open up. And then I remembered, you know, like taking the kids out to the desert and for them because they'd been locked in an apartment for like yeah, four or five imagine. months by that time they were so happy so i think it was by june is when you know kids could start going out a little bit i remember going to the shops and they weren't allowed in the shops remember that yeah yeah you yeah. know so my wife would go into we would all go because i was the only one that had a license at the time we would drive to the shopping center we would stay in the car park while my wife went shopping yeah Right, well, I've got four kids. And going crazy in the, in back, the back seat. Going crazy in yeah. the back, right? Um, and for the kids, oh, we're just out of, the, we're, we're out of the apartment. This is great. Right, right. Right? right? So, but then afterwards, it started to ease. Started to ease. We still had to put on our masks, as you know. You were here we, when we had the no, masks. So um, I had a bit of a, you, I, I pretty much had like, Went through the lockdown period in Australia, so we had a little when bit different. When you came here, there was no more masks, right? No, um, no, the, uh, no, there was no mask when I yeah, came. Yeah, no. okay, because we did it for quite some time. I but think no. we went until May of twenty-one. The school. So when I came, 20, just the schools. Was it twenty-one, yeah, yeah, twenty-one till 20, May of twenty-one. Yeah, but right. by January or February, people were really lax with it, yeah. and yeah. they were like not even wearing it, or they had it around their necks or whatever. But before that, it was pretty strict. And so, when we yeah. moved here, we had plans to travel back home, back to America yeah. every summer. And so that summer of 2020, we didn't go because my wife was just overly paranoid about Corona, which, you know, uh, rightly so. I think a lot of people were. We were seeing what was in the media and all well, that so kind of you, thing. you both didn't get that Dubai lifestyle the first few months because of COVID, right? Yeah, exactly. No, no, exactly. so I did. So I came in September It's not all about you, Timmy. You know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but September 2019, so we got five months. Okay. Right, and you know, we went to Global Village. We checked out all the theme parks. It was amazing. So you were riding high, right? Until the lockdown kicked yeah, in. Yeah, right. That make um, your second guess. And to be choice? honest, even before that, even in February, because my son was born in late February, right? The hospitals were already starting to take pre-COVID. Uh, they had protocols, so well, you know, like I could only go into the um, uh, the, the delivery room, and then the moment the baby was born, out. It's crazy. You know, yeah. immediately I had, to, I had to vacate. Well, I um, tried to ask my wife if I could do that at home, if I could just be out as soon as the baby was born. She said, no, yeah. you have to stick around. <laughs> right. Not the 1950s anymore. No. Right? 
And um, yeah, so that's that's uh, that was uh, that was a tough life. But then once COVID, uh, and of course your wife is here. She doesn't know anyone. You try to influence her, and like, why don't you be friends with my friend's wife? You know, uh, that may or may not work. Some people work, some people doesn't. And then, alhamdulillah, she started to make her own friends. Nice, right? Uh, most of them were in Dubai Hills. Um, and then when we moved out of Dubai Hills into another, you know, location, she started making friends everywhere. And um, that's why I said it's very important that your wife has her own network and own friends separate from you, right? Yes, it's good to have family friends, and if you're lucky, you know, yeah. you, like, you like the guy, she likes the girl, great. Kids get along, great. But if it doesn't, don't push it, yeah. Yeah. right? Because it's tough. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people don't understand is that, you know, women particularly, especially in our cultures, they generally have a very um, close tie with their families. Yeah, very family oriented. Right? Very family orientated. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're the bigger the, fam- the bigger the family, the closer they are. For sure. Right? Yeah, they might fight and they might, you know, uh, hate each other every once in a while, but they're very tight and very close. Yeah. And, and do you have any family here, Timmy, besides your no, immediate family? No. How about you? No, no. nothing. Just, um, no, just, just, just us. the wife and kids. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah. me right. as well. Just the wife and, and kids. And that was, to be honest, that was one of the boom that I wanted to come here. You know, I love my family, but having to go every weekend and my family and, and your my wife wife's is family, one of how many? 11. 11. 11 yeah. No wonder right. no your wife wants 10 kids. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So every weekend, there was something. They were, we rarely had our own weekend. You yeah. know? So here, one of the advantages of coming here was. You could I have just thrown some balls and put your foot down. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. You have to move across the Doesn't country work and that spend way, $100,000. Yeah, you know, guilt, <laughs> guilt treatment. Guilt <laughs> treatment. You yeah. know. I don't How know about, about your you? wife, Ali? When you guys moved here, is she happy here? Did she enjoy it? How about making friends Yes, yeah, so as her? I said, the first six months was a little bit difficult. Once she developed her own social scene, so she found that um, she started playing paddle tennis and uh, she made a lot of friends through paddle tennis because then it be- there's that camaraderie. Every week you see the same faces. And then now it's become she plays paddle four or five times a week, and then she you know goes out for breakfast after that. So Tim, I'm uh, I'm like how you were when you first came. My missus' social life is buzzing now. Right. She's got breakfast. She's got dinner. She's got birthday. She's got paddle. She's got God knows what. And obviously I got you guys. I got friends, <laughs> but I'm uh, restricted to once a week. You know because obviously you know, not as flexible as my missus because we work during the day. So then just leaves her with nights and right. then nights. And does your wife work? No. Uh, so my wife is a teacher. Okay. She worked for a number of years in Australia. Okay. But, um, you know, once my business kicked off and we had our daughter, I sort of said to my missus, look, you know, um, I like you being at home. I like the whole concept of, you know, traditional, you know, the house is clean, laundry is done, cooking's done. You know, kids can be helped with their homework. So I told her, you know, Stay, stay home, see how it goes, and she hasn't had the itch to go back. Wrong answer. Your okay. wife was a teacher for years, and now she's working even harder. Yeah, she's working even harder. She's a <laughs> 70 hours a week head teacher, a um, lot of responsibility, no time for the family. Of course. <laughs> I'm just trying to save your marriage. That's all. <laughs> exactly. uh, Timmy, just real quick, is your wife working? <sighs> well, she's starting something, her own business. I don't want to get into it because it's, 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 it's on the low. Yeah. Uh, like she's only just started, but... Uh, yeah, it's we don't different. want to talk about any illegal My wife is more on entrepreneurial. She actually she misses working. Okay. You know, so you, you must d- make life miserable for her. I know, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, some people love to work, and she's one of them. You know, she like look. Pe- there are people who like to work because they feel um, certain satisfaction. Yeah. Other people work because of the social a- aspect. You know, I think you know partly that my wife misses the social for sure uh, part. Of, you know, when you're working, especially for a big company. You know, there's a lot of people, you're interacting, you're learning from each other. and yeah, There's people coming, people going too. You know? yeah. When you're not working, so some people who have, so my, my, so my wife is a, 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 a senior project manager, right, in the payments field. So it's a specialized field and she misses doing that work, yeah. right? And she's very good at it as well. Um, and, you know, I would say that she sacrificed, you know, she sacrificed that career for me to come into the UAE and start my own payments company. She told you to say that on the podcast. Right? <laughs> I love my wife very, very much. She, you know, That's you know, very organic this, to me. me from this <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Right. So, so for her, she, you know, she misses. We had, you know, she, obviously she wants more kids. And that's I always say that that's a balance. You want more kids, but you want to go back to work. 
right? I think that's why you encourage that to work, guys. So you get out and have more Absolutely, kids. Absolutely, <laughs> right. And so, do you guys have the conversation? Are you guys wanting to have more kids? Is that something? I was. I, look, I love all my kids equally. But I was. Why I are was you winking? That's a PC right? answer, man. <laughs> right. That's right. A, I love I my know kids who's your favorite. Way, But I was happy with two, right? But Allah gave us five. Alhamdulillah. Right? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Right? Now, do I want more? Hell no. Okay. <laughs> right? Okay. Because women look at kids like puppies. Oh, they're cute. They're, like, they're fun when they're kids, but they grow up. Yeah. And as men, we're stuck with the expenses of the kids yeah. and the worrying of the kids. You can't drop you them know? off at a shelter. Absolutely. <laughs> right? It's cute. We'll take them off to a river and drown them. You know? <laughs> Jeez, <Right? Louise. laughs> So you can't do that, right? So, we're going to be re recording episodes. Right? <laughs> so that's, I mean, that was the old Trish 1950s way, right? I don't think the statute of limitations expires right? in Australia on that. So, <laughs> so I'm more realistic that, you know, understanding that children are, tw like, it's not like the old days, like, in the old days, 18, they're out the door. Remember yeah. that? Remember that sort of thing? Now. Not in our culture. Not, not in our culture. Not in our culture. But our culture used culture. to. But remember the Arab culture, they used to marry younger. Of course, yeah. Definitely. Right? 18, now, 19, 20, 25, 26. Yeah. So you. Dude, that's uh, still young, by the way. Like for most of our listeners, and they hear that you say that now they're getting married at 25, 26. I think that's really, really young. And wallahi, <laughs> just today, I was having a conversation with my mom about mm. one of my friends, and I said, he's 26, and his goal was to be married by 25. And she's like, wow, that's so young. And I'm like, no, if you're not running around in the streets and doing the hanky panky and all that kind of stuff, then why not get married yeah, and settle yeah, down a, and start your lifestyle so you're not 48 yeah. having a kid you know what i mean yeah, and, yeah. and then you know like, well, like you I can get all of that out of the way and then enjoy yeah I, I think we all have a few friends that are you know in their mid to late 30s not married not much direction in life so you know being married you know adds some responsibility to yeah, your yeah. lifestyle as much as we bitch you. about, yeah. As much yeah. as we bitch about our wives, they definitely ground. I never bitch about my. I don't do I've that. never said I a bad word about, about my wife. Let me read you this email <laughs> that I just got. <laughs> what about what about you, Karim? Your does your uh, wife work? Uh, no, so my wife was a math teacher uh, in the States and uh, uh, she stopped working once mm. we had our first daughter. That was about almost seven years ago. My daughter will be seven next month, inshallah. Was that her inshallah. choice or was she? Yeah, that was, I mean, yeah. it was a conversation that we had. It's definitely something that I wanted, but it was her choice. I mean, uh, as much as I would love to say that I put my foot down and all that, I know you guys know I have zero power, zero <laughs> say in the house. It doesn't matter. Uh, but it was honestly, it was a conversation that we had mm. together and she agreed. And really the main thing was not for her necessarily to be a home taker, right? but was that I don't want our kids to be raised by the nanny or to be raised by the nursery or the mm. preschool or the daycare or anything like that. So the conversation was for you to just stay home for the, you know, those important years, you know, seven, eight, nine years old. After that, if they want to go back and they can handle themselves and we've taught them the basics and you want to go back to work, that, that's fine. I, I don't know, I, you know, my wife just in spite of me, would probably say that she wishes she was working, you know, just to, so that she doesn't say that she loves the lifestyle that's been provided to us. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, but uh, but no, she hasn't. She hasn't gone back to work since then, and and it's been great. I think. I, well, I think, see, we've really I think Tim's it. kids are um, his two eldest are older than my than my eldest. Um, so I think one of the things that we wanted to touch on is the lifestyle here for the kids. So do you believe, Timmy, like in your opinion, that? The schooling here, oh. lifestyle here, is it better for the kids? Yeah. Do you not see yeah. the memo? I ask the questions here. No. <laughs> no, I don't ask the questions, but just... I'm look, just, I'm just look, look, yeah, look <laughs> I, I, I would say... Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to say the positives and negatives. The positives is it's a great environment. The schools here, they're all private schools. Correct. Except for the Emirati public schools, right? But those are the, only for the Emiratis. Uh, only for yeah. the Emiratis, yeah. right? The, the private schools here, I would say, are at a good top class. Right, but at an expense, right? At an expense. This is with the negative side, okay. right? But for instance, you know, in Australia, you'd have to be in the top schools to have a pool. Correct. But right? here, almost every school has a pool. Even the they ECAs, have right? Excellent fields. They've got t uh, subjects that we, you know, like robotics and coding. Coding. Oh, they teach and the robot. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. <laughs> and and sports and you know, like I'm, <laughs> you know. Even though I encourage my kids to play, uh, play sports, you know, there's, there's morning activities. Like we drive, you know, Ali's the same as, as, yeah. as, as I. We, I drive my kids at 6.30 in the morning to go to school uh, early so they can participate in, uh, like my daughter is in netball, yeah. swimming, aquathon, football. And then they have ECAs. That, that doesn't happen in Australia, yeah. right? We don't have this concept of ECAs. 
Only if you made a football team. What are ACAs? Team, just for those that extra don't Extra curriculum activities. Okay. Right. So and normally there are no extra costs, right? Yeah. Um, whereas, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, definitely. Which yeah. is like a, a big advantage. Yeah. Yeah. But don't, don't you find that the teaching style is a little bit different here? So I feel like um, they encourage. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I felt, or compared to maybe the, or the schools that my son went to in Australia, but it's more about encouraging here and learning rather than memorization. Yeah. So whereas in Australia, a lot of times it was, oh, he's got a comprehension exam so, we need to you know, yeah. memorize so, and it doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah, so the first school that I, um, I had sent my kids, I sent them to an Islamic school. And one thing I did like about the school... And what does that mean, an Islamic school? So like, uh, an American Islamic school. So like a, a in Australia, emphasis. I actually had my kids in an Islamic school. Okay. Uh, like right. a big emphasis yeah. on Islam. More an Islam and Arabic and academics, teaching. but yeah. they had a horrible sports program okay. and it, it was really suffered. just the cool, cool subjects, right? So I sent them to an American Islamic school because that was very appealing, you know, because they were shifting from one Islamic school in Australia and, and shifting to an Islamic school here. But just for um, those who don't know, like an American Islamic school, I mean, first of all, that sounds like an oxymoron, of yep. course, being that I'm from America. Yeah. But <laughs> you're saying it's an American curriculum and they've got a course of maybe Quranic studies, a course yeah, of Yeah, and they follow history. a core value, you know. Maybe they stop and pray. They follow in the, the KHDA, of the day. which is the Dubai Education um, uh, Syllabus. You can say. Syllabus, yeah. but with the American grading system and the, how the way they talk. And, and one of the things that I liked about it was because a lot of Emirates were there, they encouraged entrepreneurship. Correct. And I loved it. Yeah. And this goes to your point. In Australia, there isn't that much, no. you know, uh, emphasis on running businesses or coming up with some ideas or some fintech solutions. So I loved it, right? And when you think about, uh, and then after a few years, I've, I've now got them enrolled in the Australian um, International School. And my kids are loving it. And there's a lot of sports. There, it's a smaller school, so there's more attention from the teachers. Correct. So it's not a class of 25 or 30 students. You know, their their classes are under 20. You know, and all my kids love it. And because of the sheer amount of sports and non-sports activity like drama, robotics, and all that, the kids are. are Constantly f filled up with activities. Uh, is right? that school? Is that an Australian Islamic school? Also, no, no, or? no, just a regular. Uh, uh, they, they, so, are you they, supplementing they, Islamic studies at home well, or outsourced, or are you just well, like, think you know about it. You'll learn it. So, it. so the good thing about Dubai or the whole UAE is that everyone, every kid has to learn Arabic. Yeah, doesn't mean you have to pass or like even it, in the Australian <laughs> yeah, school. No, everyone, oh, everyone. Okay. Okay, oh, okay. Muslim, yeah, Muslim non-Muslim. Was the one hour a day of Arabic? Yeah, coffee? everyone. Everyone yeah. has to learn. Every okay. day. But if you're Muslim, you have to attend Quran classes, Islamic yeah. classes. Even in the Australian school? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Every school well, in, okay. every um, school in sorry, the UAE. To, my son's doing French at um, yeah. Region International. Yeah. He had a French exam today, so he's yeah, Arabic, so my kids. English, French. Yeah. May never so, use it, yeah. but it's you know, yeah. good school so if you, if, so you, So when your kids, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim, they must attend Arabic classes. If they're Muslims, they must attend Islamic, Islamic classes. Studies, yeah. wow. right? And those Islamic classes are depending on whether you're local or maybe you're born from the Arab world. So your Arabic is better, so they'll put you in the top classes. If you're from the Western countries where they know that Arabic is not your uh, mother tongue, they'll, teach it in uh, English. they'll, they'll, yeah. they'll put it in the, like, you know, maybe B class or C class. And that's what I really appreciate it. You know, so even if pulling them out of the Islamic schools, they still are doing Islamic classes. They're still doing Arabic. Is it to the level that I'd hoped it would be? Probably not, right? But at least they're getting it every day. Yeah. Or I every feel second like they day. strike a good balance, yeah. you know? Right? They, they but I used balance. to supplement it on the weekends because uh, for my wife, look, she's, you know, alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm blessed with a wife who is more probably religious than myself. And for her... Um, and she encourages me to, to make sure that the kids are given as much Islamic knowledge. So they go to tutoring on Fridays. We used to put them on weekends um, at, at, some, at some tutoring classes as well, um, as, long as, and as long as we balance sports and uh, other activities. Yeah. Um, that's how great uh, it is. The other side is, though, it's how expensive schools are. Yeah. Now, for the three of us, and this is where... You know, if you're an employee and you you can get a good package, if you've got a good package from an employee as an employee, a lot of employees will cover the school fees or up to a certain amount. 
But if you're down the entrepreneur, the freelancer, or the you've got your own property, you're paying out of pocket. And yeah. what Timmy is saying is that uh, employers, when they hire you here in the UAE, they'll tell you that this is your salary. We've given you, uh, you know, maybe 50,000 dirhams for the school and this much for your, your living expenses, for your rent or whatever it yeah. is. So those, those expenses don't feel like they're coming out of your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. But for us, you're an entrepreneur. We're here as freelancers. It comes out about, yeah, it yeah, comes we're out. We're paying it from our yeah. pocket. Yeah. So, Almost as if we're in the States and we put our, or back yeah. home in Australia and we put our kids in private well, schools. Well, Timmy, I think if, um, if you were still in Australia, because you have a few, a couple of young kids, the childcare costs are exorbitant. They are, but the school, but the school costs are a lot lower, right? Uh, do you guys have uh, f- free public schools or no? We do, yeah. okay. but even I was putting my kids in an Islamic school, so it's a Bolo. private school, yeah. um, <laughs> and the fees were way lower than than here. Look, um, I think it's each person, like yeah. each person's situation is unique. Mm. Like I was paying about fifty thousand dollars a year in childcare fees in Australia. I'm sending all three kids to school. Fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, because um, for for all three kids, or? Uh, two kids. Okay. My eldest was uh, going to a public school, so that was for free. Okay. Obviously, some things, excursions, and little bits and pieces you had to pay for, but generally for free. But I had my two youngest um, in childcare five days a week, um, and that was costing me about fifty grand a year. So I send all three kids to school here, private what schools. What childcare did you send them to? <laughs> look, it was a very good. Yeah, look, it was five days, and it's because like the ones you see in the movies, how to create an NBA star. Oh, I was like thinking, oh, his kids oh, are tall, so it's probably just, they'll probably be basketball. How to create uh, a superhero? <laughs> well, that's the thing. I'm doing the hard yards now. I'm going to live off them, you know, retire in a couple of years. Yeah, I hear yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, for me, it worked out cheaper to send all three kids to a private school here, whereas back in Australia, I was paying. The cost of childcare for two kids, so it sort of just for me personally, it worked out better financially. Even outside the rebate. Yeah, so bec- so now the rebates changed in the last year or so. But uh, when my kids were going to childcare, mm. I was getting no rebate. Okay, wow. Because um, I was considered a high income earner, which mm. is a good thing. I'm not complaining, you know. Obviously, it means I can afford it, but it was a lot of money, you know. So I looked at it from that perspective that hey, Dubai schooling would be cheaper. Yeah. You know, for us and whatnot. Now, for me, it's the opposite. Yeah. I, it, it, for me, it's been a lot more expensive. Is the quality worth it? I'm still 50-50 on that. You know, the school's far better than what I would find in Australia. But is it worth the amount that I'm paying? Right? You can't put my, a kids price are, on your kids my kids are happy. So I say, okay, I'm willing to fork out a hell of a lot of money. Right? Times five. To make it... Well, <laughs> yeah, times five. Because <laughs> all of my kids, three of them are in school, Top two time. are in nursery. Uh, my wife is, 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 is a baller and, and when it comes to making deals and all that stuff. So she's made deals with the school. She's made deals with the childcare. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm the stupid idiot when it comes to, oh, that's you the price. You just pay the bill. I just pay the bill. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hate to negotiate personally. Yeah. I really, really yeah, my, wife, my wife is the, it's funny enough, in the corporate world, I negotiate. Yeah. That's different. But that's in business. Personal world, yeah, yeah. But in personal world, I don't like to negotiate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. wife, alhamdulillah, every, she'll have an app that will have every discount. She'll know which store, which food, which anything. And even our schools. Yeah. Now, I'm bringing this many kids to the school and I've got another two You've coming. You've got economies of You're scale, man. Right well, no, no, she's, she's great. A, you have another five great. coming, man. You guys got potential customers. Yeah, for absolutely. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have uh, in Australia, but in the States we have coupons that you could clip out of a magazine or out of a newspaper mm. and it's like buy one, get one free, mm. save 10% off. Yeah, so I remember when we first got married, I mean, alhamdulillah for everything, but we were, we, were, we were poor, man. We didn't yeah. have a lot of money. Yeah. Um, we had uh, we had debt from college. We had debt from mm. our cars were weren't paid off. Yeah. And uh, and so I remember my wife used to you know cut these coupons out, and yeah. she used to go to the grocery store, and, and and she would you know she would go on her own. And one time I went with her, and she whipped out these coupons, and it really made me like really really nervous, embarrassed, and, uh, embarrassed honestly. Yeah. I was like, uh, and so I told her like, hey, you don't need to do that, and she still did it. And I remember she saved something like it was a pretty big deal, right? It was like twenty seven dollars on like a hundred dollar. Grocery order, right? Saving. That's like almost 30%. I was yeah. like, uh, actually, you know, maybe, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, one thing led to another. We came out of that. And I was like, hey, man, no more coupons. But if you look back over the last 10 years, if you would have saved 27 bucks every time, like, what hey, you adds up. Yeah, it adds up. But, you know, here in the shops, right, when you go to buy something, hey, how much is this dress? How much are these pants? And it's 50 dirhams, right? And you hear the other guy, hey, man, do it for 35, do it for 40, do it. I'm like, you're saving five or 10 dirhams, and the guy's working hard. Like, I, I don't like to do that kind of negotiation. Yeah, but your but wife will. Well, my wife will, and, and if my I wife don't, too. and yeah. if I don't, my wife looks down on me. Yeah. Like, why didn't you save some money? I can't believe you bought three and you didn't even ask for a discount. 
But if I'm doing a real estate deal or something, right? Of course, you're negotiating oh, prices. Yeah. For sure. That. So I agree with you. In the corporate world, it's a lot different. It's expected yeah. Yeah. in the corporate world. And alhamdulillah, God has blessed us to be in the position that we're in. It's like, I don't feel that it's right to negotiate just for the sense, just for the fact that to, of negotiating, right? Yeah. Like that guy gave you a price, that's the value, yeah. right? If you think that it's not the value and he's ripping you off, which doesn't happen here in the UAE, by the way. If I go to Egypt uh, and they hear us talking in our broken Arabic, right? Or they hear us speaking ah, English. Yeah. Price goes they, up tenfold? Tenfold. Yeah. That was exactly what I was going to say. Tenfold. Yeah. Here, they, they don't do that. You know, they, they, they give you a price and everybody asks that price. You can negotiate and you can mm. save. You can save on it. But an Emirati comes in, an American comes in, an Egyptian comes in. They quote them all the same prices. Yeah. I think it has to go for here. It's about where you go. So if you're going to buy in the tourist areas, you are going to yeah. get in a very inflated price. Yeah, but you're getting an inflated yeah. price that everyone is getting. Yeah, you're correct. not getting it yeah. only because you... But if you go to, but if you go to Mirdif, Dira, or you go outside of Dubai and go to Al Ain or, you know, and Sharjah, no, there are places you can bargain and, and really push down the price. You don't prices. even need to bargain, man. Like mm -hmm. I got a Kandura made custom made because obviously I'm about eight foot tall. Um, you know, went to a shop uh, not far from, I, th I think it was on Althania, uh, near the Althania mm. area, not far off Sheikh Zayed Road. Got created a thousand dirham. Don't negotiate. Uh, you know, it wasn't, nah, you know, well, it's not really worth it. I was at Al Barshamur, saw a shop, looked nice, looked professional, walked in, how much? 250 dirham. 75% discount, wow. man. Yeah. That's not I me. Mean. Great quality. They are, Same quality. So, they, they but, do, they and do. that's 15 they, minutes. Yeah. It's not like I didn't drive an hour. Yeah. Hey, there's about, then again, the guy in Althania, you got to understand his rent's more expensive. He's got, you know, yeah. more workers, you know, maybe a bit of a different material, but you can, you know, can get a bargain. So this statement actually kind of brings me to my next question is 250 dirhams. This comes out to about 65 US dollars. It's about $100 Australian. Nobody cares. But yeah. <laughs> uh, so in America to go and, and you said Kondora, which is actually the, the like gowns or the, that you see the traditional Arab gowns that men wear traditionally white, but you can get so them in any colors. The equivalent Gown? to your jeans. How do you want oh me to refer gosh. to it in English? So the equivalent to your jeans and your polo top, for example. A robe or something. A either. robe. It's not a robe. A robe is open. That's the American stuff. Jeez, you See, but I think the misconception is that mm. the locals wear that as a religious thing. It's actually their it's local culture. clothing. Yeah, it's yeah. culture. Yeah, yeah, so it's exactly. like your jeans and polo shirt. Right, right, that's right. Yeah, their, as yeah, yeah. They, as soon as they leave, they're outside the country in the West. They're there in Western clothes. Yeah. You got you. Yeah. 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 So, so to back home, to have something custom made, measure your shoulder width and your length and all that stuff, for 50 or 60 bucks is unheard of. Unheard of, yeah. um, so, so this brings me to my next question is the, the lifestyle in Dubai. Does it, does it create a laziness amongst you? Does, oh, yeah. Like, because yeah. this is so easy, right? Like in the States, we would never do this. We would just go to 10 different stores and try on 10 different ones until we found the one that fit us. As opposed to here, you can have it custom made for you know uh, fifty or sixty bucks, like we said. You can have food delivered for free, and you just pay the cost of the food, which is also very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. um, you can have your car cleaned, right, for a hundred dirhams. So we're talking about twenty-seven U.S. dollars uh, a month, and they'll clean it three times a week, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about twelve times. So you're talking about a little over two even, dollars. E even if you think about Kareem, and then like, by the way, the best. Yeah. Clean. Yeah. Like tires are polished, yeah, yeah, they yeah. clean the top. Yeah. It's not like a shit job just because you only well, pay think about even getting two and a half dollars. Even, even going to the petrol station. Right? You go gas. The gas station. station. <laughs> Although it's not gas. Right? <laughs> right? That's you Americans, bad. man, with your, you know. <laughs> hey, listen, um, don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, can, we can go all things about how Americans change uh, things. But look, if you think about it, I remember, you know, like coming to the, to, to the, to the UAE, going to the petrol station for the first time. And I felt I was back in the early 80, 1980s where they fill your petrol. Would you like me to wash your... Do they do that in Australia? No. No? No. 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 It's completely yeah. gone. Yeah. But so it we was... have a couple of states, uh, yeah. or I say a couple, I mean maybe yeah. three or four states. I know New York, New Jersey, mm. I'm not sure what other states, that by law, yeah. they, have, they have to fill your gas there. It's included in the price. Maybe the price yeah. of the gallon is a little bit, a little more. bit more expensive. Um, it's not. It, it's a, in Australia, that's gone. Well, I right? think there'll Very be a big market theory. for that. Right. I think if someone bought that back, there's a big market for that. Yeah. Yeah, I'd yeah. be willing to pay a little bit more. So when I go back car. to the States for the summer and I have to get out and I also take my wife's car to go fill her gas, right? So yeah. she doesn't have to deal with that. I'm like, what am I doing? I can't yeah. believe you know. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story was um, 
And then I, if they don't have that automatic holder yeah, that yeah. holds the pump and you yeah. have to stand there like this the whole yeah. time, yeah, like, this is a third world you, country, man. Yeah. So <laughs> when you asked before about how many times you go back to the country, I the first time I went back to the uh, to Australia was in yeah, 2020, February, early February, two weeks before my son was born. And um, I arrived in the nighttime, went to my mother-in-law's place and picked up my wife's car. Driving, realizing that oh, there's not enough petrol. So I drive, it's around about almost midnight, get to a petrol station near my parents' place. I'm sitting there, I'm waiting, <laughs> I'm waiting, I'm looking around, where is everybody? The gas station attendant looking at me like this. What are you and doing? then I realized, oh shit, I have to actually <laughs> right, right. do it myself. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Get out, pump, go to the, uh, uh, go, to the um, uh, go inside, and he's looking, and he, what's, what's wrong? He goes, look, I'm... Been living in Dubai now for six, eight months, right? We don't feel out, you yeah, know. Yeah, I've yeah. completely forgot. Yeah, you know? yeah. Right. And to your question is, it does. I'd say it's good life living here, and because it's good living, you can indulge in some laziness. Yeah. You know. So yes, I have a person well, who comes in and cleans my car three times a week. Yes, we get cleaners, or we used to have a maid. Yes, we. You know, I'd say fifty percent of the time we order food, right? Uh, if we're busy, you know, um, I, I'm probably every morning ordering Talibat. And and how like for when school, you go back for, home, yeah. right? Because I, I have mm. I have this sense in myself, right? Mm. Like like we hire cleaners sometimes, yeah. right, at the house. And when we first moved here, we were doing everything on our own, right? Then slowly but surely, we brought a cleaner in once a month, right, just to do the deep cleaning. Four hours. Two people, a hundred dirhams. You're talking about twenty-seven dollars. Yeah. Divide that over eight hours. You can't have that. You, you wouldn't find that anywhere. Yeah, in the you're Western talking country. about three dollars an hour per person, and they do an amazing job. Like, yeah. like they're lifting up furniture and cleaning up underneath. So it started with once a month. Then, yeah, screw it. It's only a hundred dirhams. You know, once every two weeks, once a week. You know, and then it became the conversation of like, well, should we just get somebody who's like kind of here full time and really just helps us? Yeah. And I have this problem when I go back home, right? Like. I don't want to f- tell my family that you have a maid, that you have... Because you almost feel guilty. guilty. Try when they come here. But, yeah. And they like see you, you have a maid. maid. Yeah, yeah. Right? So <laughs> I was talking to my friend about it, right? He's, he's Egyptian, but he actually, you know, uh, lives in the States and, you know, whatever. Mm. And so I was talking to him about it. And he's like, dude, you moved to Dubai. Like, you have afforded yourself. And not just financially, but, like, you have given yourself and your family that lifestyle. So it's okay that you do some of those yeah. things. But we, we have to remind ourselves that tomorrow... All of this could go away yeah. and you'll have to get back and start cleaning. And Well, so I think that's the important thing, right? We all realize that we are in a lucky situation mm. and that we actually appreciate it. We're not taking it for granted. But I have a similar anecdote to Timmy. So the last time I went back to Australia was um, June this year and um, my brother-in-law picked us up. His car was a bit low on fuel. We head to the petrol station. My you know, brother-in-law gets out, fills it up, goes inside to pay. My youngest looks at me. He says, three years old. Why didn't he call the man to fill up the petrol? <laughs> yeah. You know, and so you know he, he's three years old. But well, how he, did he fill up? How did he fill up gas or petrol, as you say, <laughs> without paying first? Yeah. So you, um, in Australia, there's a it's they, they a, trust us. We're not trust. as bad as you guys. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, that's crazy. So you guys when, have to pay first. Well, when I was growing yeah. up, right, yeah. you could go and fill up and then go inside and say, hey, I you know pump three, pump eight, whatever, and then they. will But I mean, it's been over twenty years since they've taken that because everybody would just go fill up and, and then not everybody. I mean, yeah. that's a well, that's Australia a, after midnight. Right? They'll have pay before you pump. We call it pay some before places, you pump. Some, some places. places. So all yeah. the pumps now accept credit card. You swipe yeah, your you credit can. card first, yeah. or you go if you have to pay cash. You go inside and tell uh-huh. them I'm prepaying fifty dollars on you know on yeah. pump eight. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it still it still hasn't gotten that bad in Australia to do that. You can still. So still you that. guys are the only two bad apples. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. um, but I, you know, there's, but this is the I would say the Dubai crap, right? Is that you, we all came here and we started off going to the store, right? Cooking our food. Oh, man, I remember. Cleaning our own place. Yeah, yeah. Right? right? And then all of a sudden, hey, let's try cleaner once a week. Let's order some food. Yeah. Let's 
order some gr- like fruits and vegetables and, half the time and meats. Half the time it's cheaper just to order something right. ready. Made, yeah, absolutely. You know? And yeah, there's yeah. deals constantly. Well, yeah. it's not even that it's cheaper, yeah. man. Sometimes it's just the outing. Like yeah, whether you're ordering it to the house or whether yeah. you're going out, you can try so many different cuisines, right? I mean, everything is here. Yeah. You can go out and have a beautiful outing. You can sit at a restaurant with the Burj Khalifa in the background or Burj Arab behind you or anything like that and really, really, truly, and uh, truly enjoy. Well, and I, I remember when we first moved here, I had friends that were here yeah. and, uh, you know, you hear that they have a maid or they're getting the car cleaned or or they're ordering all the time and honestly man no offense to anyone but like it was almost like you would look down upon them yeah like oh i can't believe they do that i can't believe they they become they've snobbish. lazy they've they only been here snobbish. two years yeah. and they've already gotten sucked into the lifestyle but you find and what i have found and and, and this is the, this is my answer to the mm-hmm. question is that it hasn't made me lazy because I'm not lazy. I'm not lazy by nature. Of course. And if all of this went away tomorrow, I would pick it right up and I would say, Alhamdulillah, thank God for what we had. And here we are back to square one. No big deal. But it has made me, it has allowed me to take advantage of these things. So now I'm not spending two hours cleaning the car. I can spend that time with my family. Correct. Now I'm not, my wife is <laughs> Are you there? And she, no, Are you there? She told me I have to say that. She yeah, told yeah, me yeah, I have yeah, to say yeah. that. Um, my wife is not, you know, wasting her time scrubbing this and scrubbing. I mean, we still keep the house clean. Of don't course. Wrong. Yeah, you do your but, part. but we we get to spend more time together, and especially being that I work from home, mm. like we truly, truly get to enjoy that time. And then when the kids come home from school, not everybody doesn't have to worry about all of these outside factors. So there's a trade off. Are you willing to spend a few hundred dollars, dirhams, uh, whatever it is, yeah. a month, so that you can have this extra free time? Whatever you do with it, right? Whether it's your wife who wants to go play paddle and have breakfast, yeah. or whether it's your wife who wants to start her own business, or my wife who wants to go out with her friends, hang out with her husband, things like that. Uh, I think so. I don't think that it makes you lazy, but from the outside world, right? From the Western world, if they saw us, they would say, "Man, you guys are lazy." Like, you, well, you know that I think the test is, the test is, when you stop using those facilities. Correct. And it hits you hard. It does. Because yeah. I remembered, you know, when um, when we stopped using a maid, right? What well, happened to your wife? <laughs> <laughs> My wife is not the maid. I'm right? kidding. I'm right? kidding. <laughs> It was a big shock. She doesn't get paid. And I'm not just for my wife. <laughs> it was not just for my wife, right? But even the kids. Because what happened? The maid used to clean their rooms. Correct. And all of a sudden, I'm telling them to do their beds, clean the, take the clothes out of their room, clean the bathroom. And that was a shock to them. Why? Well, where's the maid? You know? and, and this is where they can get spoilt yeah. here in Dubai. So right. we haven't allowed that with our kids. Yeah. Even when the cleaning crew comes, we'll tell them yeah. to do the mopping and stuff in the room, but we don't put up their toys. Don't do like, they still have to do that because again, mm. guys, like we're here on whatever visa or whatever reason we came or because mm. we can afford it. But like I said before, this could all end tomorrow. Yeah. And then you go back to the States, right? Because if, 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 if like everything went to hell for us, we're going back home, right? We're not going to stay here and be poor yeah, here, right? Course. We're going to go back home to our families, to our homes that we have there and there's no way that yep. you could afford this lifestyle, right? Absolutely. Um, and, uh, so, and it's not the norm. And I would hate for our kids to like, have never cleaned. And, and I asked this question earlier about us going you know, back home. I think we go back home for two months in the summer. I think that it gives us a good balance, right? Yeah. Because we're here for 10 months and we get spoiled. And I tell my daughters all the time, like, guys, you're having dinner at a place where people have come from all over the world to come to this mall or all, you know, to see this building that we just drive by every single day. You can see the Burj Khalifa every single day from wherever you are in Dubai, you could see it. And people are coming from all over the world to see the tallest building in the world. And we take it for granted. But I feel like those two months kind of humble us and remind us yeah, that's of, true. of our roots yeah. and where we are. That's also up to you as parents to take, have the parental responsibility of making sure your, your kids are not spoiled. So my kids got used to having a nanny. So to sometimes the point where they leave the house with no shoes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So they relied on the nanny to right, pack. Right, right. Obviously, the nanny's human. She's of gonna course. forget, right? Oh, it was shoes in the bag. In the bag. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant they walked out barefoot with no, no shoes. No, no. So oh, he was okay. wearing his swimmers. I've been bashing you for two weeks now about that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's all good. You see what I did there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, it's up to, you know, it's for example, my kids will say to the nanny, "Oh, can you get my shoes? Can you get me a cup of water? You know, can you go upstairs and get me my undies or whatever? You know, and." When I'm there, I'm like, hey, you go get you do it. it yourself. Yeah, 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 because I understand, you know, that's part of her role. But at the same time, if we, if we spoil them too much, yeah. they're going to find it really hard to adjust back. Because as we said, we'd all love to stay in Dubai forever. But we probably all know eventually we're going to have to go back to our home countries. 
I um, disagree with that. We'll talk about that on another episode, episode for sure. Yeah. And because we touched on that in the first episode yeah. about, you know, you guys said you thought you were coming for five years. You thought you were coming for two years, maybe another five years now. So we'll talk about that in another no episode for sure. But I think we've all seen kids that are here, whether they're whatever nationality that they are, they don't do anything for themselves. They're straight brats. You know, they treat the nannies like shit. Um, and it's, it's like our prerogative to make sure that we are still the parents and that we're still you know, molding our kids to, to be that way. And, and, and to, cause, because if we had that, if the three of us had that lifestyle, right, of a nanny doing everything for us, I don't think we'd be where we are right now. No, you wouldn't not. have had the gumption no. to go and start your own business and work hard and do all of that stuff because all your life somebody was doing it for you. So why when you graduated from uh, university would you have all of a sudden decided I'm going to start working hard when you haven't done shit your entire life? Um, so I think it's important that we also give uh, our kids those stepping stones so that they can also when they grow they can be independent and not have to rely on someone and if they decide on their own with their hard earned money and with their brains that that's what they want to do fine so be it but we have to make sure like you said that we're not raising yeah. sports kids not so that they're not brats right because that's the least of give the them the tools that they need exactly yeah. so that they can so I give my kids now certain chores now right yeah. And uh, clean Bubba's car, clean Bubba's <laughs> shoes, <laughs> yeah, to be honest, right? Except for instance, Buff Bubba's head, <laughs> clean the you know, you do the dishes, you take the laundry out, right? So, on the days where the clean is not there, I make them do it, right? Uh, and you get a well, lot of grumbling, them, so, you yeah, get grumbling, yeah. But I really, only got two that can actually do the work, gotcha, gotcha. Right? the other <laughs> the one, one that can't do it. Well. Uh, uh, the other three are still too young, right? For me to explain, I bet you the eldest two complain yeah. that they do everything. But um, yeah, it's just uh, you know, it is. It, it it took a while to get them to start doing chores again. Yeah. Right. And that's why I said it does build. It, you can get lazy here, right? Or or spoilt. And I think it's always good to to mix it up or to balance it. But from that, from the other perspective, is that when you're having a busy day, you know. So for example, if you have a busy day, you haven't got time to go to the grocery store. Or your missus, for example, has a dinner coming up that night and she hasn't had a chance to go shopping. You could literally look at something online in the morning, say a dress, and your wife could get it delivered to your place that same afternoon. If she doesn't like it, she just calls the company, tells them, hey, this doesn't fit me, it's not the right style. They'll send the driver to pick it up the following day or two days later, free of charge. Yeah, yeah. So also when you're living a busy lifestyle like we do, even though we're in the UAE, it doesn't mean we're not busy. Of course. We've still got the same responsibilities we had back home. Of course. But it makes your life easier when it's like, hey, oh, there's no milk in the morning. Let me get noon minutes, 10-minute delivery. You know, um, having it, my wife hasn't had a chance to cook. You know, I don't I, think any of us are yeah. hiring help, you know, as they say. I don't think any of us are hiring help so we can lay on the couch no, of and watch Netflix, yeah. you know. We're hiring help so... <laughs> I wish that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, wish. But we're hiring wish. help so that we could focus on our job, so we can yeah. focus on our family um, and, and, and spend more time doing yeah. the things that we love. And if we can outsource the tedious things, right, especially for us as adults, like, us, we've already done yeah. the important things. We've already learned those things. We already know our nature and our lifestyle. Fine, so be it. Let somebody do it. I used to wash the TV shirts and then my wife would iron them yeah. and, and the guy down the street will pick it up and do it and deliver it back for five dirhams jumbo a dollar and a half mm. like why why would i watch my wife stand there and iron when when i could just sit on the couch and hear her bitch and well, half the time i'm running out of undies when my missus did the laundry now i've always got everything ready to go you know at the drop of a hat so, so you're free awesome free-balling. so we're going to end on that night, guys great episode two <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning in we hope that you guys will turn in for task tune in for task three uh this is the task cast live from dubai